Welcome to Speech Signal Processing Lab. Our first experiment is non-stationary nature of signal. Aim of the experiment is to understand the difference between stationary and non-stationary signals, to get feel about the non-stationary nature of speech signal, and to understand the limitation of Fourier transform in case of non-stationary signals. To perform the experiments, click on the simulation tab. In this new page, you have the interface to perform the simulation. Here, you can select different experiments. Corresponding Scilab code will appear here. Click on this help button for any Scilab online help. Our first step is to generate a single tone sine wave. A sine wave is characterized by its three parameters, amplitude, frequency and phase. For smooth contour of sine wave, it is better to consider the sampling frequency to be much higher than the frequency of the sine wave. So we have taken a 10 Hz um, sine wave sampled at 1000 Hz sampling frequency and for the duration of 1 second. Here 1000 indicates the sampling frequency and the argument 1 indicates the duration in second. This command is used to generate the sine wave of 10 Hertz. In order to perform the simulation, click on the execute button. Here we have obtained a single tone sine wave of 10 Hertz where the x axis corresponds to time in millisecond and y axis corresponds to amplitude. We can generate different sine waves by changing the frequency value 10 to the required values up to about 250 to 300 hertz. For example, if we change this value to 50, we can obtain another single tone sine wave of 50 hertz. Moving on to the next experiment. Here we intend to generate the magnitude spectrum of the 10 Hz sine wave. This fast Fourier transform command is used to compute the magnitude spectrum of the sine wave. This command is used to plot the values as a function of frequency. The scaling factor ratio of 1000 refers to sampling frequency and 1024 refers to the number of points for FFT computation. On clicking the execute button, we obtain this magnitude spectrum of 10 Hz sine wave where the x axis corresponds to frequency and y axis corresponds to spectral amplitude. Our third experiment is the generation of multitone sine wave. Generation of multitone sine wave is similar to that of a single tone sine wave. The only difference is the number of frequency components. Here all the frequency components are present at all instants of time. Hence the multitone sine wave that will be generated by this program will be a stationary signal. We have obtained this multitone sine wave by using frequency components of 10 Hz, 50 Hz and 100 Hz which are sampled at 1000 Hz. Next program generates the magnitude spectrum of the previous multitone sine wave. Same procedure as that of the single tone sine wave magnitude spectrum is used here. Already we have generated stationary single tone and multitone signals. Now in this program we are generating non-stationary multitone sine wave. A simple way to generate such signal is to use different combination of single tone components available. In this Scilab code, a non-stationary multitone sine wave is generated using 10 Hz, 50 Hz and 100 Hz component. Here, first 250 sample contains 10 Hz, next 250 contains 10 and 50 Hz. Next 250 sample contains 10, 50 and 100 Hz. And the last 250 again contains 10 Hz. So this is a non-stationary multitone sine wave. In this new program, 
we have to compute the magnitude spectrum of the previous sine wave which was non-stationary but the spectrum of the non-stationary signal will be meaningful if it is computed over regions that can be treated as stationary as we can see in the last output there are four regions 0 to 250, 251 to 500, 501 to 750 and 751 to 1000. These four regions can be treated as stationary separately. So in this program we have computed magnitude spectrum of 10 hertz component then magnitude spectrum of 10 and 50 hertz component then we have computed the magnitude spectrum of 10, 50 and 100 hertz component and last again we have computed the magnitude spectrum of 10 hertz component. So in the output we are getting four different spectrums. Now we will plot the waveform of a speech signal. We have used here a speech signal which is recorded using microphone. It is the Hindi word Sakshat. It is sampled and stored using suitable sampling frequency. We have plotted the wave format of the speech signal in the time domain to observe the time varying characteristic of the signal. Here, portion of the signal having only speech samples and not the silence region is used. This command normalizes the signal amplitude to be in minus 1 to 1. And in the output, we are getting this waveform of the speech signal. Program, we have computed the spectra of different segments of a speech signal. The spectrum of any portion of a speech signal can be computed using FFT by viewing it in blocks of 10 to 30 milliseconds. Once again, we have used the speech signal of the Hindi word Saksha. In the program, this command selects about 30 millisecond of sound unit SA portion. This command selects about 30 millisecond of sound unit A portion. This command selects 30 millisecond of sound unit SHA portion. And this command selects about 30 millisecond of sound unit A portion. Again, this computes the magnitude spectrum of SA. This computes the magnitude spectrum of A. This computes magnitude spectrum of SHA. And this computes the magnitude spectrum of A. So in the output, we are getting four spectra of different segments of speech signal. Find experiment, a silab code to compute spectrum of the entire non-stationary signal of 10, 50 and 100 hertz components is given. Here we can observe the limitation of Fourier transform. The output of the program shows that the timing information of the non-stationary signal is missing. The same thing can be observed in case of the spectrum of an entire speech signal. In this W3 Scilab interface, one can modify the given codes can change the values to get different outputs. Thank you.